Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to see you back at this session. I have some really incredible news that I am going to like go ahead and hijack this meeting and tell you that, oh my goodness, our ALK people are so incredible. You guys have raised so much money for ALK Positive, and we have a generous donor who is willing to match up to $50,000. So far, you guys have raised $37,000 in just these few couple days. And there's so much that we can do with that. And this just goes to show every little bit of um, uh, every little bit counts. And together, we're so much stronger. So anyway, you guys are incredible. I had to hijack the beginning of this meeting just to let you know that uh, because of you, we can make so many things possible. And I am so honored to introduce to you some amazing people that I know really well. One is former NFL uh, linebacker Chris Draft, who is an amazing lung cancer advocate. If you haven't met him, you have missed out. And today, you're going to get a little toast of him, a little taste of him. Um, in 2011, um, he, he lost his wife to lung cancer. And so this is his enemy and he fights with us and for us. And he's taught me so much about um, how important my story is. I wanted to kind of hide for quite a while when I first got diagnosed, but he told me that um, it's, it's important to tell my story. And then I met Dr. Uh, Ribello, who also um, told me that my story matters and so does yours. And so this is an incredibly important um, session. I'm so excited that they could offer this for us. And so I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Ravello. All right. I'm thrilled to be here. Wow. Thanks so much, Gina. And Chris, I mean, I think you need to start off with the story of us coming together. I'll pop some slides up and we'll give it a go. Awesome, man. So Gina, thank you so much for uh, inviting us to be here. And I get to you know, hang out with my man, Dennis Rebella in our positive community. So I, I, you guys can't tell I'm excited. I mean, if you don't see me doing cartwheels and flips, it's because the, the Zoom screen just won't work it out. But extremely excited. You know, I see the, on the back of Gina's, uh, you, know, uh, you know, on the back of her screen, it says stronger together. And being a, a football guy, I, I mean, I, I absolutely know that, absolutely believe it. And, you know, really our community has to accept it, right? And so when, when Amanda told me that we have 700 people that are a part of this ALK Summit, I'm like, what? Yes, yes, right? Along with the fact, I think there's 30, you know, 30 people, you know, like 30% of the people are international. So, I mean, what, you know, what a just, I mean, how impressive. Uh, and it really just talks about how it's not just what does together mean, but really the community here in the United States is connected to people all over the world. And, you know, we, if we accept that, you know, what's possible is, is amazing. And so, and so I get, I, I had to say that because I get on I me, mean, I'm excited, I'm excited to be here with my man, Dennis Rebello. I mean, if you guys see it, he's got the slide up. It says story like you mean it. And I mean, that's, and that's what this is. You know, we have to story like we mean it, but what do we mean? You know, what, why are we telling our story? You know, Dennis is going to go through this kind of a way of telling the story in a way that's going to be impactful. But the question is, why are you telling it? And, and, I, and I, I will say that relationships are why you're going to tell your story. You know, talking to somebody to get to know somebody is why you're going to tell your story. And, and so I can tell you I met Dennis, but I met Dennis not because he said, hey, I'm a lung cancer advocate. I'm like, hey, I'm a lung cancer advocate too. No, that did, that's not how it happened. Uh, I went with a group to Israel. And I actually met that uh, the guy that was coordinating the, the group to Israel. I had met him through relationships of being Tony Dungy's right-hand guy. Saw him at the Super Bowl in Minnesota. And he tells me about a trip going to Israel. And I was like, how can, how can I go? <laughs> and so he said, hey, you know, we got space for you. So I ended up going on this amazing trip to Israel because I, I talked to the guy, you know, because of, built, of relationships, you know, that I've put in place. And we had a reunion. We had a reunion at the uh, Bible Museum, at, you know, a year after we had went to Israel. And, and it just so happened that on that day, there was a guy named Dr. Dennis Rebello that was invited to hang out with us. And, you know, again, it, it, he, he, he wasn't a part of the group that, that went, but uh, a guy that brought value that was, you know, that was there for a reason. And we had a chance to, to chat with each other and, and he, he got a chance to get to know me. I got a chance to get to know him. 
And, and next thing you know, we, we find these connections uh, that are you know, greater than just story like you mean it, but really these connections with lung cancer. And so I wanted, wanted to start this thing off with saying that you know, it's in, you know, we really need to understand why are we telling our story and acknowledge that we have to give people permission to be able to share their story. And so we, you know, part of this, this journey is that Dennis is going to give you all these nice tools, but then we have to ask ourselves, how are we going to use them? Yeah. To create a safe space for people to join us. Are we going to create the opportunity for us to be even a stronger group together with our story? Or are we going to make it only about us? And so uh, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. So Dr. Dennis, my guy. <laughs> All right, Chris. Yeah, from DC to Elk Summit. Here we go. All right. So I wrote a book and the book wasn't really about me at all. It's really about the reader. And you might be wondering why I wrote this book. And, you know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it because I want you to be able to tell your story um, because every story matters and every story is an inside job, right? Every story is an inside job. I'm a science guy, I originally studied physics. I worked for the Department of Energy when I was uh, 16 by way of a special program for a few weeks in the summer. I was a geek. I was a geek who rode a BMX bike um, and everything to me was though a structure. I was a little underweight, but I was number one on the East Coast for some time riding my bike. Um, I had a little bit of an issue with my neck, um, a little accident, they thought I broke it. It was a cervical sprain and I started studying more and became a little smarter. And, uh, and that's how I became the really official geek. But I look at everything as science, cutting things up. So I, I was amazed that the greatest sports people in the world needed a little help telling their story. And I was invited to these conversations with folks like uh, Tony Dungy, who Chris just mentioned, who you probably know as the coach of Peyton Manning, but boy, he's written some great books like The Mentor Leader right here. And I spent uh, days with him, uh, one, two days, and uh, unpacking his story. Um, yeah. If you've ever seen a Peloton bike commercial or ridden a Peloton bike, this is uh, Robin Arzone in the upper left-hand corner. Um, I unpacked her story. I think it was six and a half hours long. But I go for the long haul. You know, I stay with it. Uh, Mike Tannenbaum, you've probably seen on ESPN. He was the GM of the Jets. I know if you're a New England person, the Jets are your nemesis. I'm in New England right now in Rhode Island, which is really, it really is New England. It's not Long Island. And then we have people like uh, the CEO of the, of the Dolphins. And if you're non-traditional, like Tom Garfinkel, if you're a non-traditional person in terms of sports, we have, uh, or a runner, this is David McGilvery from the Boston Marathon, race director for years. He runs the whole Boston Marathon at the end of every year. And this is Eric Weinmayer next to him, who is uh, next to Matt Stover as well, the kicker. But uh, this is uh, Eric. Eric uh, went blind at 13 and climbed every one of the largest peaks in the world. And I think Everest mm -hmm. twice, I believe. And so I've unpacked all of their stories and they had a lot of lived experiences, but you don't have to be a sports hero to have really impressionable moments in your life. And I'm a professor um, at Roger Williams University. I have a private practice that gets people ready for big time public speaking. And I have a nonprofit that works to help folks in career transition, tell their story uh, to interview well. Because if you can't answer the tell me about yourself question, and we've all been there in an interview, right? And, and you, you've all been through obstacles in your life. Tell me about yourself. How are things now? That's the question that I became obsessed with, just like Chris is obsessed with, uh, well, football and advocacy. I became obsessed with that question. I'd like to play this video for you because this tells you a little bit more in 60 seconds why I thought this was a problem and why I wrote the book. Then I'm going to just jump right into some methods to help you frame your story. Okay. Just gonna navigate over here. Slight delay. Da da da. Uh, here we go. Tell me about yourself. Such a simple question, or is it? In reality, tell me about yourself is pretty tricky. It's filled with amazing opportunities, but also pitfalls. The way you answer it could excite, inspire, or make a deep connection, or it could turn into a missed opportunity to lead a team, land a job, or get into the right school. The right answer can accelerate trust and highlight your unique value. The typical ho-hum answer leaves your audience never thinking about you again. In Story Like You Mean It, Dr. Dennis Rubello lays out a research-based method, the peak storytelling model, for making your answer count. 
10 years in the making, peak storytelling is used by entrepreneurs, CEOs, athletes turned nonprofit leaders, advisors, and thousands around the world to confidently tell their story and showcase their value and worth. Get your copy of Story Like You Mean It today and never have a humdrum, meh, should have, could have, would have, tell me about yourself moment again. Okay. Well, that's why I wrote the book because I just didn't like the eh, meh, humdrum moments. And everybody can really tell a positive story about themselves. And the more lived experiences you have, the better. So I became obsessed with, remember I said I was a geek. What's the structure? For someone like Chris, it's what's the play that you're going to make? that you're gonna execute on the field as an NFL person. As a medical doctor, what treatment plan are you going to go with for this particular patient, this human being in front of you? You have to have a system, right? And you all know this because you've seen the complexity of healthcare, right, and wellness. So start here at the top. This is what I learned in my research. This is probably gonna be 90 seconds. Don't worry, I won't be here forever. But it's important place to start. People are always conscious of a storytelling moment. Even the CEOs who said they were great storytellers, they would tell me the following. I knew what was happening, Doc. I knew it. I was conscious of it. And then in all the transcripts, this is the next step that everybody reported. They did in different ways, of course. A desire to tell the story to their audience. And it was felt somatically in their body. Like, I knew I had to say something. I knew they wanted to know about me. Uh, uh, uh. Then they had an unclear start. Why? Because look at the right, that little box. They were raking through all the things in their head. Well, you know, they think I'm sick or they think I'm good at this. They think I did this before. They think, and they want to know how I am. And maybe I should say, but I'm not sure. Rough unfolding, rough unfolding, right? Because like, I'm thinking I'm oh, that too much time is gone by. Then you start looking at the nonverbal feedback of the other person, right? And you might even increase your pace. Then you realize, wait a minute, time's kind of running out. Uh, I told part of the story. Maybe I'll get them to them next time and finish it off uh, in a better way. The problem, of course, is that we don't always have 16 or 17 times, which is the average that you need to recreate your story if you goof it up the first time, right? To be able to advocate for lung cancer research or changing the face of lung cancer through your advocacy. Or maybe you're using it to just mitigate a relationship that you know became um, renewed through what you're going through today and, or maybe you're going back to work or maybe it's, well, whatever it might be, that's your decision. Again, I didn't write the book for me. I wrote it for you. Mm -hmm. So here's the good news. This isn't going to be all theory today. I'm going to give you some pictures, but as Forbes said, uh, this is the part I like, I like it when Forbes says nice things, especially <laughs> if I wrote them. Um, but the last line I really like, which is, uh, the book was, uh, listed as a, a top book this year. Um, and it said, uh, it's one part theory, 10 parts insights, but a thousand times more fun than your last public speaking appearance. Uh, the appearance. This book will ensure that you'll always know what to say and how to say it. Now, I didn't pay them to say this, so I was thrilled. You know, again, when somebody just gives you this, you say, good, this is what I wanted. I wanted to build the structure so that people could understand, anybody could understand, especially as it turns out, folks who are advocating for something that is really a mega shift uh, in the world of, of lung cancer. So I'm giving you a sneak peek of the book and I'm gonna pause first before we do that because I want Chris to jump in. Chris, come on in with me. It's awesome, man. You know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna jump in just so you we're, guys- we're, we're jazz musicians, right? This, we're jazz and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go off each other. So as Dennis is giving you guys that intro, I wanna just focus you guys' minds. Right now we're talking about story like you mean it. And we're not talking about your cancer story. Mm -hmm. We're not saying cancer story like you. We're talking about your story. You're Thanks. the person that you are. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Right? Be moments that you've overcome within cancer, but you are so much more than cancer. So get your mind ready right now. If you, if you haven't really kind of thought about it, it will be who you are is bigger than just your cancer experience. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's what this, this book is about. You know, again, we're not cancer storying like you mean it. We are storing your story, your yeah. special, unique story that is you, right? And that's not an out positive survivor. You know, that is so much greater than just an out positive survivor. It's all the experiences that you have gone through in your life before you got to this moment. And yeah. all those things matter because when we think of advocacy, advocacy is about the relationship that you have with the person and really acknowledging that they need to see themselves in you. 
in most mm -hmm. cases. Mm -hmm. Where do you guys connect? Lung cancer might not be the place, right? Other places it does, but where do you guys connect? Right point. Right point. So knowing yourself, believing in yourself, and, and then I, I just, just have to say it is, we have to, you know, part of this experience is saying that you are enough, you matter, you know, this is, you know, you have lung cancer, own it. And so now let's own our story. But, you know, Chris, I'm thinking about Gina. Gina, are you okay if I jump in and, and si give, just share something from our experiences together? Sure. Yeah. So when I first met Gina, I, you know, I, I just knew Gina had lung cancer, right? And she didn't look like she had lung cancer. Um, and then when we got to work together, I was able to understand um, that part of her story was that, you know, she was the daughter of a United States military person and she traveled a lot. And she had to become more um, open and adaptable and to other people. And the one, the one thing she did as a, a, young, a young gal was that she was a caregiver to people. And that, in that caregiver past part of her life, she started to get to feel really good about, you know, kind of being a humanistic sort of touch in people's lives. And, you know, then she became a nurse, right? Whoa, wait, nobody told me she was a nurse. They just told me she had lung cancer. But Don't give away my whole story because I'm about to tell it at the end. Okay. <gasps> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, die. no. So this is just an appetizer. Okay. Pump the brakes. Yank the emergency brake up. Spin the car it's a, around. It, it's a teaser, man. It's, it's a, te a teaser. Okay. So this is like the little trailer for the Amazon bit or the Netflix bit. Okay. So that's all <laughs> I can say. But what, what, I, what I realized was that which, which is what Chris is suggesting that it's really important for all human beings to realize it's not a slice of your life that we're talking about. It's how you connect the dots. We've heard that phrase before, but it's very, very difficult to do it no matter how good you are. Right. And I can, I can tell you this just from my private practice that, you know, folks with PhDs, MDs, I'm going to the Cleveland clinic to work with folks there, evaluated folks there in the leadership level, the highest level, they're wonderful human beings but is really critical uh, whether you work for the government or you work as a public speaker to constantly do deliberate practice. That's why pros do it in the NFL. Now, the, the introduction in the book I put up on the screen, I just did that so you could see how, even though I'm gonna show you some pictures and I'm gonna speak pretty um, technically in a few minutes about how, how to think about your story and your blue dots, which I'll define in a minute, that this is really about, tell me about yourself. And you've been there before. The person's taken by surprise who has to tell me about themselves, right? I'm reading right from the book. They hesitate. They start to mutter something about what school they went to, maybe what cancer they have, how they realize they got cancer. I'm ad-libbing here. It sounds like website copy, maybe something you heard before in a cancer group or a self-help group or a care group or from somebody that you met who didn't really want to admit how you memorized, whatever it is, no flow, no character. Maybe it's not a complete train wreck, but the people get the order, order tangled up. And you've seen this at work and you've seen this in school as well. And you see frustration on the, on the person's face who's speaking, right? They've lost the interest of the other, of the audience, or of the whole group. It's awkward for both of them. They're stumbling their tails off, and finally they blur it out, right? They're, they're like, I'm going to tap out. What about you? The other person's ready. That's Gina. She explains in a few sentences the decisions, actions, and path of her life, showing how she's overcome obstacles and worked with others to have ended up in the exact place at this exact time on her way to the next goal. This time, the listener gets it. They pay attention, dot, dot, dot. This is just the intro. But I want you to see that this is written to be read. It is written as a manual to be used, okay? Now, quick, uh, you know, you can look at me funny or wave or, or smile and say, uh, hey, oh, I know Maslow. Uh, I'm going to explain the model. And if you know Maslow, great. You can smile extra. Maslow is like my grandfather. That's why he's smiling. And um Maslow was a, a, a great humanistic psychologist who, who really brought to life this, this hierarchy of needs. And I'm going to explain this to you because I think it's really critical. And I invite you to bear with me for about 60 to 90 seconds, because this sets the stage for what I'm next going to show you, which has to do with your story. In life, as human beings, Maslow said this. Maslow said, look, we are driven to eat, have water, physiological needs, and sleep. That's what we're concerned about. Then only then are those satisfied. Can we ladder up to actually care about actually, you know, shelter, safety, those types of resources. And then only then can we really care about belonging. And you probably remember when you were in middle school and didn't feel like you belonged, how you couldn't really get to feel good self-esteem, which is the next layer. 
or have confidence. But once you were accepted into a group, like most of you are today in this amazing group, accepted, that you can start to feel good about yourself, confidence, filled with trust, right? Achievement, respect, and then you can help other people feel good, which is the essence of self-actualization. That's when you can be truly moral, creative, and spontaneous. You can solve problems and accept facts. Well, I love this model because it's really organized. And organization is important. If I'm going to teach people how to tell their story, not just to build it, but tell it, perform it, be a lyricist to their own life, like a great, like the, if you've ever seen the show Songland, amazing show where they actually have songwriters write songs. And then four, four, four folks who are going to be, uh, who are stars, uh, like Will I Am, and they choose which song is the best song. But see, the burden is even, it's, it's a hard thing to write your own story, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of hard. So, I mean, again, this is why I was attracted to this. So something about self-authorship for you. Three phrases on the left, so important about self-authorship. You need to experience cognitive development. What that means is you need evidence to know what you know. Those evidence moments are the dots that I'm going to show you in a minute how to find them, right? If you don't have a moment in your life to unpack and be your own psychologist, very difficult to find meaning. You can't story like you mean it if you kind of mean it. You just kind of don't do a good job of it and people know. Interpersonal development is key. Intrapersonal development is answering the question, this is who I am. But you need cognitive development, some evidence to be able to say, this is who I am. In sports, I see that in terms of statistics. You're either running a good 40 or doing a great three cone drill as a defensive guy like Chris, or you're not. Interpersonal development. That is, do you have the relationships in place? As we see these three go, if you find more dots and you know more firmly who you are, you form better relationships and your sense of self-authorship goes up. Woo. Oh, look at this t-shirt. Oh, you don't send me something that I don't wear. You gotta put this on. Okay, this is critical. And only then can you use an external formula to help at a crossroad experience author your life. This is so, so critical. Woo, Chris, do you wanna add something? I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm like, I feel like I'm a saxophonist in the jazz band. Brother, I'm, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. I'm hoping everybody, uh, you know, again, just, just flow with it, flow with it. Don't feel yeah. like that you have- Yeah, yeah, you don't have to, this is a 200 page book. It's a 200 page book. We're just giving you the yeah, juice. And, 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 you know, again, just, just really accept the fact that when we're talking about story, like you mean it is that mm -hmm. your story answer matters, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to, you know, this, this method is going to help you unpack that. And you're going to see how you've overcome things. You've been a part of things and how mm -hmm. all things come. When we say stronger together, it's not because there's a bunch of individuals that are a part of the out positive community that, mm -hmm. 700 people together and you know that it's transformative because of all the unique qualities of those individuals mm -hmm. right? when you put those things together we got we have something that's explosive right uh but it's important that we we find out you know you know who are you and really validate those things because again it's not just numbers but there are people that are affected by lung cancer yeah right on so this is the method i told you i like triangles right and so there are three layers this is a three-stage story system you know, I'm going to break it down and make it really easy because I, I, I mean, it really is. If you break it down and I'll tell you, the best thing was me sitting down for so long, going through all my research and saying, how can I make it in one picture? And that was my goal. How can I take all my research and crack it down into one picture? Because mm -hmm. in life, if you can reduce a lot of complexity to one picture, you can, if you can codify something to me, you're, you know, you're going to be, a, you can cross stuff over. You can put stuff into action. And that's the most wonderful outcome you can have when you're a researcher who cares about people's lives, right? And you know, if you like psychology, you know, that's great. But if you like psychology to work, you better start decoding things. And so that's what I did. And so here's the deal. So all of you have had hero experiences. So that's the first type of story. And that's the level one story you see, okay? And that's about self. And these stories... These are moments, I call them blue dots. These are the most formative experiences in your life. Usually you can feel them at zero to 13, maybe zero to 20, 22. They, they are usually representative of a past part of your life. Maybe you had to stand up for, for yourself to a bully. 
Maybe you had to learn English as a second language. Maybe you had to deal with divorced parents. Maybe somebody was taken from you early in your life. Maybe you were, well, whatever it might be. And in that moment, you discovered something. Remember, this is a hero moment, not that someone else was, was getting saved, but you were saving yourself, right? It's the essence of self-reliance. You were the hero within your own life, within this moment in time, not a season of time, a moment when this thing happened and you had different muscles that fired off. Maybe you showed leadership, communication. Maybe you showed that you're a flexible or creative and you had different people around you and, and you were in a different place. The next type of story that I've studied that is really important is called the collaborative story. And you're doing that if you're, if you're making this a worldwide conference, boy, isn't this a collaborative story getting here, right? I mean, this is a massive collaboration and, and collaborative isn't just belonging to belong. It's actually doing something to create something for another or others. And so by being here, if this constitutes, if this is a formative experience for you, then this could be your collaborative blue dot. Now you see lots of dots in these sections because you've lived a life, you, you're right? You know, you haven't been on the planet for a couple of years, you've been on the planet for a while. And so the more you live, the more dots you collect, not everyone, <laughs> not everyone is a blue dot, um, but that's only something that you can subjectively tag as blue. For me, it was, you know, maybe it was motocross. Maybe it was when my house caught on fire, probably when I was getting hurt, definitely presenting at a science fair project level, very high going to that national science foundation thing. Um, yeah, that was all pretty big, but there are more, right. And you know, what are yours? right? What are yours? And the collaborative moments can cross over. They don't have to be just at work or just in education. They can be with family and friends. And so can the hero and so can the virtuous. So that's the second most powerful story. And the reason why it's powerful is because it shows how you are with others, right? Because you don't live a life in isolation. You live a life as a social creature uh, amidst other human beings, right? And so if you're telling that hero story all the time, that, that's the only dot you tell. You never ladder up in the peak storytelling map to show how you can be long and collaborate and build, right? And have that sense of togetherness with others. So it's so important. And sometimes we celebrate, I know in my own life as an early entrepreneur, I told a lot of stories to myself about overcoming obstacles. And, you know, I come from an immigrant family, half of my family anyway, and they told a lot of obstacle-driven stories. But it wasn't until those individuals told stories about being with others that they could ladder up to be even higher on this chain here. Chris, do you want to add anything? Yeah, just uh, again, as you guys were soaking, yeah, soaking it up, uh, I mean, allow yourself to really go back, right? And, and, and you know, again, let your cancer, you know, cancer story is there. It's, it's on the forefront because we're at an out positive settlement. But really, I want you to go back. Go back to, to the experiences as Dennis is, I mean, he's going back young Dennis. Uh, <laughs> those are a part of who you are. Those, those are the things that allow us to really recognize why it's so important. Dennis is talking about this collaborative story. I, I, you know, I think it's, it's pretty obvious that the, the out positive community started by Marita and Tom was created so people would not be alone. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that we would not have these continuous hero stories of people having to overcome all kinds of obstacles to be able to get their care. And so when I think of just the out positive support community, that is a that is collaborative. Mm -hmm. And it's a you know, collaborative because we understand the importance of being together. You know, we it is an intentional part of saying that we are stronger together if we get together. Yeah. So yeah, and, and it's all to create something. So it's not just you belong and you, you're, you're like a fan in the stands. You're actually showing up to do, right? You're showing up to do. And I think that's an important distinction. Thanks, Chris, for adding your insights to us. As, as always, they're, you know, they're layered and they're strong. Um, the, the third type of story is a virtuous story. And look, this is just kind of a fancy way for saying it's the thing that you love that it would be immoral for you not to do ever again. Mm -hmm. For me, it's teaching. I love teaching. You know, Chris, it's advocacy, you know, what is it for you? What is that thing that's like your super self, your evolved self, the thing, you know, you know, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's community development, you know, maybe it's marketing. 
how, how does that show up within this space in a way that serves you that in, energizes you because you look whenever i meet somebody i am never neutral right and you're not either you're either taking energy from the person right they're giving energy to you right or they're taking energy from you you're never you're never neutral because you meet somebody oh i just met chris i'm totally neutral for having met chris or gina right so so this is something that's very charging to even identify this is usually like a little bit into the future or right in the just now future. And you catch a whiff of it, like a good cup of coffee. You can kind of like sense what it is and then you can still change it. So think about level one is past hero. Collaborative is usually right around now. And this is a three chapter story, right? And a three dot connection, a three stage story. And then virtuous is like, just I'm doing it right now, but I could even do it this way in the future. Like I can see it evolve, mm -hmm. like, whoo, look at this yeah. thing. And that's why we yes. put the heart at the top because that's the heart of living, right? Is being able to make mm -hmm. those connections. And you can zigzag across. If you're thinking, well, doc, you know, can I, can I go across lanes? Of course you can, because you're a human being to Chris's point. And just like I said that, you know, Gina was a nurse and she was daughter of, of, of a military person in the United States military. Boy, like that changes things. It makes her more relatable because we see her story over time. You see, when I say story like you mean it, I want to know your narrative, right? I want to know, and everybody else wants to know, where did you come from that you're this person today en route to the thing that you're about to do? And it doesn't matter if it's a job interview, advocacy for lung cancer research, or that you're hosting an event, or that you're explaining something. Everybody wants to know, why is this person serving me the cup of coffee at the cafe? How did they get to this place in time in this way? It's sort of a natural uh, calling, yet nobody really teaches it. Chris, man, I, I'm I'm over here. I'm, I'm I got goosebumps over here, man. I got goosebumps, and I, I don't know if the out positive community over here has goosebumps like me, but I, <laughs> I I'm just feeling I'm feeling triangle as I'm I, I'm thinking about the history of the out positive community and, and and how you know you have a group of people that end up that decided to get together as, as a support group, and then from there recognize that if they were intentional about you know really pulling the resources and the skill set that 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 there was a greatness on, on, you know, on the other side. And, and, and when I see that there are 700 people as a part of this, this group, and we know that we're just scratching the surface in terms of what's happening, it says to me, hopefully as everybody are at this conference, they say, well, what's possible? What is coming? You know, and then not just what is possible randomly, but really acknowledging, and I know you guys have been a lot of researchers on, there have been a lot of people that have a lot of information, and hopefully everybody is soaking up how you guys have been a part of determining your future right now, right? You're not passive and sitting back. You, you, you said, we are going to be a part of this change. We are going to affect this change. We're going to push this change, right? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm excited, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And what's really interesting is I think about, you know, it, and so like interestingly timed, right, Chris, like this is the slide, right? That when we get, when we think of our brain, we think of our brain as either being left or right brain. You've probably heard of that, right, folks? It's like, you know, it's the left brain is analytical language and the right brain is passion. But the reality is that it's, it, you know, the brain, two sides of the brain are connected, right? And so when, and when making the system, I, I realized that I had to be logical but I also had to ensure that per people as human beings could emote, they could be passionate, right? And uh, you just witnessed that in Chris and it wasn't timed that way. It's just the way things go up because he's so, you're doing your virtuous story. You're doing your virtuous work. And we don't show up and tell people, hey, this is my virtuous work. You just tell your story. And, and what we're doing is we're just showing you the different ingredients. So what this is, is like making the ultimate chocolate chip, coconut, you know, raisin cookie, whatever the thing is that you like to eat for a cookie and showing you that this might be a way for you to hack your story so that when somebody actually asks you about lung cancer, about ALK positive, that you have a, a way to relate to them because everything is relational. We live in a digital world with digital digressions and all those digital, digital digressions aren't good, right? Some are good. We're able to connect with digital uh, technologies today. I'm a digital person for sure. I teach online on Navy ships and Zoom rooms all over the world, but let me tell you something. I wanna be on track, eyeball to eyeball, hand to hand, hug to hug, live with people. And being relational is, is uh, we're over connected and under relational today. And so hopefully some of uh, the ways in which I'm sharing some of the system of thinking about dots in your life will help energize you to say, wow, you know what? This is what my past was. This is what I'm doing now. 
And therefore, a lot of these parts of your life aren't secrets anymore. They're, they're voiced. And when you start to voice your story, you start to animate who you are. Ah, and I start to see you, right? You tell a story and it, and it, and it lightens up my sensory cortex, my motor cortex, my brain starts to... And it's like, whoa, there's a stickiness to story. Then I can restory you to someone else. Hey, I, I met this person, you know, and uh, he was really great. He was right under Gina in the little, uh, you know, video bubble. And he said this, and he told me this about him. And now I carry that with me. So stories are retellable in a positive viral way, which is another big uh, win for it as well. Chris, anything else? Yeah, so I, uh, you know, I saw I saw in the uh, in the chat. I know you know Gina actually put it in there. And said it was it was difficult to uh, to, to to share initially. And so, yeah, uh, I, I just you know, I I I am excited about what's happening here, right? But let me, let me first say and really acknowledge that it can be difficult. Uh, that you know, and that means owning that you have lung cancer. One of the things that we've struggled with in this community is that you know, we have to believe that anyone can get lung cancer. I can tell you that my wife Keisha was, you know, was diagnosed December 2010, you know, and, and, and unfortunately passed a year later. But throughout that whole year, I did not hear her say, "Why me? How could this happen to me?" She accepted it, right? It's not anything that you want, uh, but she accepted that, and so that wasn't a part of her her story. It wasn't, and so you know, I, I think within this group is you know, accepting it that it does happen. I mean, we can say that anyone can get lung cancer, but we have to believe it. You know, and that might take a little bit uh, of, of absorption of, of sorts, but really look at yourself in the mirror and know that it wasn't that you did something wrong. It wasn't, you know, it can happen to anyone. And so own that part. And then now that's, that's you know, you're going out and sharing with somebody. I'm, I'm the first person to say that I didn't know that anyone could get lung cancer or at the very least didn't believe it until my wife was diagnosed with lung cancer. You know, and, and sharing my story, my hope is that they don't have to learn from, you know, from their experience, but they can learn from mine. That they can learn from the fact that my wife is 37 years old, that they can know that anyone can get it through my experience, not something that they have to wait to learn from. And so again, if it seems like it's some work, it is. Uh, if it seems like it's gonna take you some time to know your story, you know what? Yes, right? Because you know, again, what we're doing is we're in this process of advocacy, we're literally selling. And so a salesperson is going to practice their story. Oh, well, find somebody that you can talk to. Don't feel like that you're about to, you're going to go and talk to somebody and you don't practice. Take some time. And, uh, you know, again, find somebody that you can share with that, that uh, can really listen to you in, in a way that can give you real, you know, <laughs> real advice, real uh, input. Uh, but know that it is some work. So again, Dennis is going through this process, but it is. This is something that is a difficult thing yes, because it, it challenges us to take a hard look at ourselves. But the process, if you go through it, at the end, you are going to be so much more confident yeah. and in about what you do. Yeah. And that confidence comes from seeing some of these words in your blue dots. And I just put these words here because these are words that I help uh, through the book you find in your life. You know, leadership is influence and it, it all influences leadership. Being receptive is very different. Receptive is being open, being empathetic. Um, maybe you're an explorer. Maybe you're an explorer, like your pioneer quester. You know, you're like, they'll be the first. You know, you're, you uncover rocks. Like you're pulling rocks out of, you know, looking under things. And, you know, whatever it might be, uh, maybe you're a great communicator. Maybe you're learning that or relearning that about your life when you look at your dots of your life. And the book has you go through nine key moments and then even helps you with storytelling worksheets so that you can help yourself form a story that makes sense right and you know words like organization here means that you know you know how things work it doesn't mean you have a neat desk or a sloppy desk maybe you learn that you're really adaptable and you forget about that and see we forget um, as human beings that we actually have these mental muscles discrimination here means being analytical or inference-based uh, which is being really detailed. Maybe you were a musician and you could hear notes that were off and you're like, wow, that really helped me as I was going through a treatment plan or having conversations to self-advocate because I realized I could ask questions that were very exacting, right? So you start to connect the dots in your life and you start to be re-energized to be the person 
whom you are. So even though like we're talking about advocacy, which is a vo voiced something, the first step is to really understand, explore, and identify the dots that are important that provide meaning in your life over time so that you're energized first and foremost, right? I mean, isn't that the most critical thing? Because when, when you figure that out and align that, then, then, and then and only then can you really voice your story, okay? And so here are the yeah. dots and here's the stamp. Now, I just wanna get into this and I wanna open it to Chris in a minute. Every one of these blue dots, what we do is we show you how to find in the blue dot, pretend this is like, I'm old school. Like I remember when they used to have transparencies, which is like, uh, allows you to kind of just f float like, a, make, imagine this is like a stencil over your blue dot, okay? It's almost like a tattoo over your blue dot. Every one of your experiences in life have competencies, like I call them mental muscles, but it's like leadership, creativity, had different people involved. Maybe you were an out of doors kind of outside kind of person. Maybe you're, you know, maybe you're always around people in a activity. Maybe you were inside a lot. Maybe you were like, um, you know, in religious worship groups, place, right? Um, motivation, and it could be several. And every one of those, these, these slices of a blue dot equals the blue dot. The, like every ingredient, right? Or, or every dot has these four ingredients, right? You know, and you can start to look. And we actually ask the questions in the book. The book is like a workbook too, in a way. So it makes it easy because you can just, be private about it. And really, as Gina mentioned, it is hard, but you know, when you, when you have the ability to map through it, it becomes much, I mean, it would be even more impossible if you didn't have any help. Right. I mean, you know, it's very difficult. And then you start to look at the negative or positive of that, that slice, right? Like, well, I was in this workplace that I didn't really like, or I was in a lab or I was in a treatment center. I was in, but you realize, but there were some nice people there. Right. And then you start to reframe it, or that's when I realized whatever. So the, the book is filled with visuals and ways for you to eventually find and collect similarities across dots. For me, I love curious people. I like people who lead, who are seekers, who like to learn, who are really pure, good folks, open for help. You know, I like school-based learning. I also like training in cool places and then in, in difficult areas. And I put a microphone because we have some exercises in the book where you pick symbols to represent who you are. I put an old school microphone, kind of like this one, but a little bit older wow. school, because I like people finding their voice through the research and teaching and the coding that I do so that they can actually feel alive. And I've worked with people who are Cambodian, um, young 16 year old students who are dual enrolled in college to 86 year old um, business owners. And so the book becomes multi-generational and a bit multicultural too. And, and so if you're wondering a little bit about that, um, there it is. And then you start to realize that you're, you might be this type of character who's a, a rebel explorer. These are psychological archetypes, but I just put them here. And maybe you realize that you're a little bit of a wizard, you know, jester, right? And, and so like you, you find out, or, you know, or are you an endless caregiver, right? Are you a tireless advocate with heart? What is the way in which you fashion yourself? And eventually you fill out your own sheet. We call this the four square and pick your own symbol. Again, using a lot of different tools to help you form a story that you're proud of and that you feel your own value and worth in your life first and foremost, um, that's really prime to me and to, I think, Chris, and then you can share it with others. Chris, anything yeah, you'd like to add? Yeah, I'm looking at, the, looking at the chat and I saw uh, a few folks, I think it was Eve that said that uh, the, you know, the cancer is only a part of your story. And that is so critical that you guys recognize that. Again, story like you mentioned is not your cancer story. Uh, it is it is your story. It is who you are. Yeah. And I, I think when you get into the support group, a lot of times it is really just more about your cancer story. But when we're looking at advocacy, this is about who you are. It's a bigger story. Uh, the other part is on the way to telling your story. Uh, you know, allow that to marinate. Uh, share that with other people. Mm -hmm. Where you're struggling, uh, those... That's okay. I mean, you know, let people know how you're struggling with the idea. Like I said, the, the idea that anyone can get lung cancer is not something that that just happened that I just knew. It was through my wife's diagnosis that that really hit home, and I had to accept it, acknowledge it, rather than every day try to fight against it, right? That and that's you know that's real, right? I, I know there's a few guys that are that are working through that, uh, but can we accept where we are? Uh, 
And then, and then as you're, you're working on advocacy, it's important for you to know yourself, but then, you know, that next step will be to get to know the community, really understand the community and do the work of, of knowing that. So then you understand where you fit, mm-hmm. but it's key to know yourself first though who are you you know and, and and own that you have value that being diagnosed with lung cancer didn't take away all of your life before that well you know i hesitate to say that we have been blessed when someone is diagnosed because that's just wrong to say but in a certain way we are because your skills now can be you know brought into the lung cancer community and you know again it's it's un- no i i can't say that it's unacceptable for me to say but i just want you guys to know is that every one of you bring something unique and special. And, and after that, you know, that diagnosis does not take that away. You are still a unique and special person. And, and it's important that we allow that to shine, right? You are not just an out positive person. You are not just a number. You are a person. And I can say that, but it's important that individually you guys are able to remind people of that. And, you know, and at times, again, I know this is difficult, at times remind your family and friends hey, I am here, I'm still alive. Don't treat me like I'm some number, some stat, I am here. <laughs> and so you might need those experiences to remind your people that you are right in front of them. Yeah, right on. And, you know, I'm thinking about the, you know, what Dr. Uh, Wanda Heading Grant, who's over at the, uh, she's the inaugural vice provost at, um, of diversity, equity, inclusion at Carnegie Mellon. And she said that, um, you know, she loved about uh, the process is about the unique, you know, how you can tap into your unique gifts and talents and motivations as a person. And that's really, I think, so critically what you're saying here, Chris, right, is that let's not forget about your personhood, right? Let's not forget about your self-authorship and let's bring those talents um, and those gifts to light. And uh, and please do here. Um, And, you know, this other quote that I thought of when I was thinking of uh, everybody in this talk today was around the obstacle course of life, you know, this is uh, Joe DeSena, who is the CEO of uh, Spartan. You know, you're in an obstacle course race, really, right? For for real. And uh, when you make sense of it, you know, you can really feel like and voice it, you, you're getting off the couch. So here's a little bit more about the book. And uh, yeah, it's it's been pretty uh, well received. And uh, it would be wrong for me not to say how unusual it, it is to report that um, heading into this weekend, Literally in Friday evening, I received a call uh, from my dad that he uh, um, he has lung cancer, and um, and that's my dad there uh, in my 1990 Alfa Romeo, <laughs> and um, we took a ride. He wasn't feeling well a couple of weeks ago, and I said, "Why don't you come down and let's go for a ride and talk?" And uh, because of he had switched general practitioners, he went to uh, through a new uh, lung cancer pre screening. And, um, and actually he has two types of cancer. He has lymphoma and, uh, and then they had diagnosed the lung cancer. So when I think of the manifesto that I wrote before I did my TED talk, particularly, I think we're all divinely placed here for a reason, which became more apparent to me uh, Friday evening and more apparent to me every day And I'm going to read this to you. Uh, This is on the back of Chris's shirt. Chris, maybe you could even turn around a little bit and show them that shirt you're wearing. Um, Yeah, right on. This is your story. Story like you mean it. If you aren't in character, jump in. You've been divinely placed here for a reason. Honor your calling and act on it with purpose. Love, 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 love is within all of us. Show us yours. Your work is your positive story. Give back as a practice, interconnect. To story is human, consciously create a collaborative one. Judge less, invite more, be at peace. You are blessed. Retell the power of story with love. Story your dream, settle your soul. And above all, inspire by doing. Eric Erickson, the great American, uh, German-American psychologist said, we are what survives us. And your story does just that. It survives you. It survives you in every interaction, every quiet talk with yourself, every meeting with a stranger, a caregiver, a doctor, a group, an audience listening to you. It survives you. 
may yours be one that you feel proud and energized by and may it energize others. Gina. You made me cry on that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry to hear about your um, father, but um, we are here. We're your lung cancer family and we're here for your support and his if you need anything. But um, I, I just have to say that this is one of this has been one of the things that um, really meant so much to me is really learning how to tell my story uh, with impact, your, your elevator pitch sometimes, because sometimes you don't get the 1530, you know, the hour to tell your story because your story is, is, has so many intricate turns and twists. And you helped me so much to learn how to tell it in a short, impactful way that, that hits every point that people need to know. And, um, and so I would definitely encourage everyone to get the book. Um, if they can get a session with you, that would be even better um, to really be able to have an impact because um, I, I said in the chat that, you know, I get, I, I've had the opportunity to speak at some large conferences and people will come up to me and say, Gina, you're so amazing. You're such a unicorn. But the truth is, I, I'm not. Every, everybody has this amazing story if we know how to tell it and and your story can make an impact on others so thank you so much so if i can say the, say a few things before we get off uh, is you know i I'm, I'm so excited that dennis was able to share with you guys uh you know i i, I think hopefully it's pretty obvious that uh, as a as a linebacker that played in the nfl uh that it was unacceptable for lung cancer to take my wife and so the fact that she's gone means I am trying to take lung cancer apart piece by piece. Now, the only way to get that done is we have to build an army. Now, reality is we have 235,000 people that are diagnosed every year. That really is an army. Uh, but somehow we're not activating those people. So what I want to give you guys is really a charge that says, you know, when we share our story, it is important that, that we find it first. You really find that story and, and find the acceptance of lung cancer. Uh, as someone... That isn't, you know, that's yeah, a smoker. You might need to it just bizarre. one can get it and just really own that. Uh, for somebody who has smoked, I want you guys to know this. In 1998, the tobacco companies got hit for $200 billion. If, if that doesn't say that they are guilty, guilty, and all kinds of guilty, uh, that anybody that has smoked is a victim of that industry, uh, it's, it's, it's obvious, right? Uh, only just recently, uh, the opioid uh, community got hit with $26 billion. We're literally talking about almost 10 times as much. So we've got to love each other. That's why you know I'm over here in North Carolina. We're making white ribbons. Heidi, Pierre, Heidi and Pierre made a white ribbon with love and are giving them out with love. We have to love our community, heal our community first. And then as we do that, we will recognize that there is an army. We just have to care about our folks. And as we do that, we will share stories. We will share a way that will allow people to share theirs. And I really want to end, end, you know, end with this. You know, I know we have a little bit of time, but I was in Maui, if you guys saw. Uh, I did a youth camp, uh, a Christian youth camp in Maui, and it just so happened that one of my assistant coaches when I was doing the football section, his mother-in-law had passed from lung cancer. And because, you know, I am not shy about making sure it's clear that I am a lung cancer advocate, he saw that on Instagram. And then he, you know, he... I made it welcoming for him to be able to share his story and he, and he shared it. Uh, and so literally three days after I met him or, you know, basically two, two days, I, however you want to see it, we were making ribbons in his garage with his family and, and was just so completely excited to be able to share love with other people and, and, and appreciation for the oncologists, you know, all the people that are part of this community. And so, I just want to challenge you guys as we, we, we kind of go through this moment is really own your story. All of you guys matter, but you are unique and special individuals. You matter. All right. Make sure that you appreciate your caregivers and the people that are around you. They have a different experience with it, but they all matter too. All right. We need to appreciate the folks that are on the front lines. That's how we move forward. It is not randomly. It's because people that are going after going to work, we see that change that is happening right now. Believe in it. I wish it happened faster. Yes, we all do. But right now we are in the middle of the greatest change in oncology ever. Yes. Know that. Yes. Leave that. And you guys.
were part of pushing it forward. And so if you think of, have we really stood up together? Have we really told our story? Have we really come together? Have we really loved each other? We have not. And so we're right at a moment where not only has great things happened, but we are in the moment that we can take this to the next level. And so story like you made it is, starts with owning it, owning ourselves, loving ourselves, and then loving others. And then we go get it. Mm. Mm. That's NFL energy, folks. That's NFL energy. <laughs> that is Chris. Thank you so much, Chris, for really punctuating the, our time uh, co-presenting today. Uh, it's always uh, just, man, I'm just thrilled to be with you all the time uh, in this journey. And uh, I'm so uh, just energized by, by all of the comments I've uh, received and notes and things of that nature that have uh, affirmed ways this, um, you know, this tool can help help individuals really help them organize their story and own it on their own and feel better for themselves first internally and then voice it externally. Your story, it survives you. Every interaction, every relationship, it survives you. All right. All right. James, Amanda, hey, you know, uh, do we have a little bit of time or... Uh, or is it ready to go to the next session? I think we're just wrapping here. I think we have two minutes. All right. Um, I think that's right. Well, yeah. well, you know, thank you guys for all the comments uh, below. Uh, and again, know that Dennis has been committed to this lung cancer community. Uh, I've, I've, I've to talked to him and he shared with me, uh, you know, a, a while back uh, and know that uh, certain proceeds from this book are going towards making oh. sure there are opportunities to interact with you guys. Yeah, yeah, that's right. been a uh, supporter of the lung cancer community for a long time. And, uh, you know, and, you know, just, just know that there are people in your lives that have, that have a, a story, uh, have a connection, and you have the opportunity to, to let them be more involved. And, uh, you know, again, their skill set can be transformative. Dennis's skill set is, you know, as a story path. And man, that's what my shirt has on. It's helping us all find those peak stories. And, and what we know is that's transformative. That's great. Well, thank you all, Dr. Rebello and Chris. You all are amazing. And it helps us um, how to tell our story. And don't forget to check out Dr. Rebello's book. It's on Amazon. I think someone put it in the chat. Um, this closes out this session. We're going to have a quick break and um, come back, please, for our closing thoughts from our president of Al Positive Incorporated and um, for some closing thoughts. And we will see you all in about 10 minutes. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dr. Rebello, and thanks, you Chris. You bet, Amanda. Right. Thank you.